So let's get uh, rolling here this morning. All right, so let's go to the strategies. Uh, there's two strategies that you're going to be getting. Uh, one is getting sent to Gerald today. I'll go over that right now. And that is the outer edge trade. And the other one will be sent here next, next week. Finishing up a few things on it. This is the one that's going to be sent to Gerald going out today that you're going to be getting in your mailboxes. And not mailboxes, but uh, on the download page, member download page. So there's two types of strats or indicators and strats. Let's say that indicators and strats. Indicators and strats. We have a breakout indicator. Right now, currently, it's long. At, I have it out to 1,000 ticks on this one. Um, 50, 20, and 3 quarters. I do have the trail uh, off on this. I just have a hard stop and my target. So this is the um, this is the breakout level. I mean breakout trader. And then we have what's called the outer edge slingshot. So this is what we're going to be getting. We had three trades on it yesterday. You guys were in the room when I was going over this yesterday. And first let's go over this uh, the strat real quick to make sure we understand it. So what the outer edge slingshot does, it's looking for a push below my outer zone and then it closed back inside of the outer zone. So if you get if you get a push below the outer zone and then you get a push back inside the outer zone, it's going to go long. Now this is a 113 13 chart. I'll go back 90 days of data for you in a second. Hey, good morning, Derek. So you'll get a push outside of the outer zone, and then you get a push back inside of the outer zone. All right. That tells us that we have a possible reversal in the market. So let me just go slowly over February results here. We'll go back and show you what I'm talking about, about how the consistency of it getting outside the zone, pushing back inside. Then we'll go 90 days back and look at uh, you know how this is performed the consistency of it and how you would want to do it so this is a, this is uh, an indicator slice strategy so this is the outer zone it is an indicator slingshot okay an hour zone sleep shock is comprised of our first wave trade, getting outside the outer zone, and comprised of our future waves based upon getting outside of my zone. Now, you can adjust this zone to your liking. I got my standard zone in there that I like already. If we push below it, meaning, let's go over this setup real quick. So yesterday, you guys are watching this live in the room. I had it up. You can see on these three setups, we push below the zone and start closing below the zone. Once it closes below the zone, and you see that candle that closes back inside of the zone. Now this is a, like I said, this is a 113.13. Uh, you can use a 112.12 also. Um, traders do like to use a 112.12. They're about the same. Very close, but they are about the same. Uh, the one to twelve gets you in about a almost one tick better, sometimes two ticks better. But once you close outside of the outer zone and then you close back inside of the zone, that is a that's the trigger or the entry for the setup. Your stop can be a hard stop, or in this case, I'm going to show you um, what I have is this trailing stop is the ultimate exit. So you have four contracts. You don't have to trade four contracts. You can trade one contract up to four if you use a strategy. Indicator, you can do anything by yourself. But these arrows will automatically fire, and an audible alert will go on your computer. So an audible alert will go on your computer when these arrows fire outside the zone, showing that you're in a possible reversal. That lets you know that this market could reverse back up. 
Okay, and then you can use your trail as your ultimate stop. Whatever hits first, your hard stop or the trail. I got the I got the stop way out there to make sure that all exits are on the all exits will be on um, when the trail hits. So we had three trades yesterday on the outer edge trade. Like I said, this is finished. This is done. Um, Joe will get this this afternoon. He can start wrapping this, and we'll put this on the members download page for you to download. Okay. Um, the next one we'll be going over is the zone breakdown. I'll show you. That's for more momentum. But the idea is this, is getting in the outer zone and punching back inside of it. So if we look at the consistency, let's just look at the consistency of the indicator and outer zone. So what happens is it, let me skin this down. What happens, you get into an oscillating market like we were yesterday. You're going to get a lot of these outer zones. If you get into a trading surge where the market is just trending, you're going to get a zone breakout. That's what we're in right now. We're in a zone breakout. This market's running. Right now, it's along the market right now, the other strat. So you can see the other strat on the zone breakout, as long as it broke out at that level, it, this will turn a yellow bar for you when there is a breakout trade. So it's long at 50, 20, and 3 quarters. It's trailing right now. 50, 50 and 3 quarters is as high as uh, 34 and 3 quarters. So it's up almost, what, 13 S&P points from this morning on the strat on this breakout trade. So those are the two type of strategies you're going to get. You're going to get the zone breakout where these dots come up and tells you what levels the market's going to break out at. Now you notice that it did not turn yellow here or yellow here because it still is has a it's still in the trade. If this was out and you were out of the trade, then these bars would turn yellow on the breakouts. Here would be an entry. Here would be an entry. And we're waiting for another entry right now. You can see it on the indicator in the room. That's where it went long. That's where it turned yellow. Bar. That's where your little yellow candle formed. Okay? So what you want to do then is you have two types of strategies. You have your... Breakout strategy. So here's another long setup. This is on the 11313. You get more setups. So that would turn yellow there also if it's strictly looking for shorter targets. These are trade setups right now. So in other words, if I come in here and I put shorter targets, I have a 25 tick stop. Let's say I did 12. Tick targets, what have you. you. You can have up to six targets on it. I just want to show you how this will turn. Then every breakout level, what it will do is it will go long. All right? So we'll let that fire up. Or you can just get into the first breakout, have a trail on it, and just trail that up. All right, so over here on the zone, so you got two types of strategies. You got your zone, where it gets outside the outer zone and pushes back inside, a close back inside. And then, if you're in a range market, it works really well. If you get vertical like this, this is 90 days back, so it's taking a little while to compute. Oops, let me turn it on, sorry. That's why. So if you look at if you look at my range, range is if you get outside the outer zone. And then if you start getting vertical on the market, these breakouts work well as far as this breakout um, indicator over here. So now the next breakout level would be 40, 50, 42, 50. So you can use this as an indicator. 
You can use this as an indicator to buy the breakouts here, 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 here. So you can buy the breakouts there. Right, let me get this. My target up to 1,012 ticks. Hold on one second. You can use the breakout levels there for you. If the market's running above in an imbalanced market. So here, see how these turn yellow? Because we're running. So the strat, this is just 12 tick targets. You can have multiple runners on this too with break even plus one. But look at the difference in the strat. So my next breakout level, it will turn a yellow candle once you close. Yeah, I, I got it, Derek. When you go 50, 42, it will turn a yellow candle and get you back in the market. So the difference in the setups is this between both of them. So this morning, these are all breakout trades. And how you know a breakout's coming, you'll see it on this strategy. Once this yellow prints, it's going to it's going to give you an audible alert. An audible alert will come up that is going long the market or short the market. So the next buy breakout will be here at 50, 42, 50. So if you notice the entire session, we've had one, two, three breakout trades. And we've had no outer zone trades. So the two setups you look for in the room that we stalk is the outer zone is here at this level. We're going to look for a buy if we get below 29 and a quarter like we did yesterday. It got below, closed back inside, market ran. Got below, closed back inside, market ran. Got below, closed inside, market ran. All right, so that's an outer edge trade. But when the market gets hot like this and the market's moving up, like yesterday too, the market was hot here at this level, you're going to get zone breakouts. You're not going to get some outer edge trades. These were the zone breakouts going to happen because it's an imbalanced market. So they really work well together. They work well because if you never get outside the outer edge, then you're in a trending market. Well, this strategy will pick that up. This strategy will pick it up like today, and I'll pick it up on breakouts, breakout levels. So those levels will pick it up. So the next breakout level on the S&P is 40, 52, 50. And this candle will turn yellow, and an audible alert will fire on your setup. So let's go back to this real quick. Let's go back to this is what you're getting first. This one, you're beginning, I'll be getting to drill uh, mid next week does have a trail built into it that I'm finishing up where what it will do and I was showing you guys yesterday on this trail this trail is pretty sweet that you guys were members were looking so what it'll do it can get long at this level and not even worry about these and trail all the way up until your trail hits right here right I showed you guys how that worked live yesterday on the NASDAQ So you have a trail, you don't have to just take singles, it will go long, it'll take no other trades until it stops out there. I'm, I'm finishing up that right now. It has a built-in trail. It also has a built-in number of closes above the breakout. You can dictate how many closures you want above or below these breakout or breakdown levels. So this is two closes. If you want one close, you can. If you want two closes, you can. You can dictate how many closes you want before this bar turns yellow to pull you in. But these are the breakout levels that you want to look for in the S&P. These are the levels that, that we show as an indicator and algorithm. You can see it's very effective on catching the momentum of the market. But it gives you a big heads up, too. It heads up that the next momentum is going to be 50, 42, 50 is the next breakout. We're going to stalk this morning. So we're going to watch that level. We're going to watch that level, see if we get into an imbalanced market, and try to buy this breakout. And when this starts shooting through two closes through that breakout level, this candle will turn yellow. That's your trigger candle or your entry candle 
that has an audible alert. All right, so that's the two types of setups. I want to make sure we understand that. I want to understand why there's two different types of setups. Right now, February 9th, we're going vertical, right? I mean, look at this. We're not getting to the outer zone. So what happens is, is if you're going vertical, you can't buy just deep retracements like this. The market may never get to them. And since the market may never get to them, you need to look at momentum setups. So having these strats in the indica indicator or strat, some traders don't like using strategies. They like using indicator-based to go with their own indicators or our indicators by themselves. So what I did is I put an alarm on this. There's an alarm when these arrows fire on the outer edge, and there's an alarm when these yellow candles break out. All right, it lets you know that the market's breaking out. And that's pretty cool because what it does is now you can trade range or breakout markets because the market can only do two things. It can run vertical or go sideways. If it goes sideways like yesterday, fine, go in a range market because guess what we're going to try to do? We're going to try to get into the outer zone and play these zones. And I'll show you the, the consistency of this in a second. Or... We can let it do what? And I'll show you the consistency of this. We'll go 90 days back on this. We'll go 90 days back on this. Or we'll let it break out into a running market above an imbalanced market, above HV and below LVA, and look to get into this zone, I mean, this breakout trader. Okay? So our next breakout, like I said, is way up here at 15.42. And the next buy signals at 50.29 a quarter. So we have two setups we're looking for right now. We're either going to look to buy the breakout. When it breaks out, it'll turn a yellow candle, get an alarm, or it's going to give us a retracement. And the retracement has to close below 50, 29 a quarter. Don't make it any more difficult than that. So let's go back and look at this one, and then we'll go back to our zone breakout because this is the first one, the strat you're getting. You get, uh, I mean, Gerald's going to start wrapping this one. He'll get this today. And um, then the other zone trader, after I fix the uh, auto trail, we'll be getting that out to you guys also. So what we'll do is we'll look for it to break below 29 here, keep an eye on it, and get back inside. So let's look at the consistency. So when, you, when you're running, this is obviously, is was yesterday was a zone breakout indicator setup. You just some nice trades on that. You can see here, our outer edge never fired. Well, the previous day, what were we in? On February 6, we were in what? It had four outer zone trades on February 6. One, two, three, four. Why? Because look at the market. Look at the difference in the market. Now, this is how you, you can see the difference. In. Look at range. So now we can trade the outer edge and chop. And even works in when you break out into an imbalanced market. But you can see how it works well in range also. Then we go into a vertical market where the zone breakout works better, see, because you're getting outside HVA. So now we have an indicator that can actually get us into chop markets, not just breakout markets, because they both work well together. Here, the market's breaking out, right? I mean, it's running. So what happened is, is a zone breakout trader picked it up, picked up these buy signals. Now, the easiest way to see the zone breakout buy signals, like I said, is when these dots start going vertical, it's, it's a cup and handle formation. What that means is, if you look at all these setups, there's mini cups and there's deeper cups. A cup and handle is one of the most powerful setups for continuation trades. These are cup and handle trades that it automatically spots. So what it'll do, once you break through, the top of the cup right there, that is my dots that come up automatically. If I two candles, that yellow bar will form, alert will happen, the strategy will go along, or it tells you if you're getting in um, on your own uh, chart trader. So the next breakout is 42.50 coming up, well, which we'll stock this morning. So now I have two possible setups. Either I break 42.50 here and get a yellow bar to pull in, or I break below 50.29 a quarter on a deep retracement like yesterday. We had three in a row, and we pull back in. It's that simple, right? We have two setups that we stocked in the day. So let's go over this. 
I don't want to make this video too much longer, but I want to make sure you understand the, 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 how these two work together. So if we go back and we were in a, rain, a market breakout there, broke HVA, we had a lot of range breakouts on the other strat. And then we got into, I want to show you the consistency of the setup. Let's just go back to February, then I'll go 90 days back. So if you could see that we get to the outer edge on a cell, pulls back in, and then it fires. I have an auto trail that trails us out at this level. Now you'd have to trade four contracts. It can be one contract on the micro, on the strat, or the big contract. Totally up to you. It's all about reward to risk. Know your reward to risk, and, um, and you'll be good to go. So we had four that traded on the six. Going into the day before, we had one stop on the trail, and then we had uh, one deep retracement. Let me get this down more so you can see it. So this is just February. We'll go, we'll go back in February just to look over the trade setups on the outer edge trades. So we get into the outer edge there on the on the first. Had a lot of outer edge trades the day before that. Another big outer edge trade at two o'clock on news. Another uh, outer edge trade the day before that. So you can see the consistency of the outer edge trades. The consistency of all February went one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twelve. 12, so 21 trades in February so far as far as this track goes. Now, we go, now remember, past performance is not indicative of future results, so just make sure you're aware of that. We all have to understand that. These are historical price data going back 90 days, I'll show you in a second. But if we go into just show you the consistency of the results, what we want to do is when we look at this and we look at the setups, we want to see the consistency of the setup on the outer edge trade. So these are just the February trades. Then we'll get into um, this is a February trade trading around the clock, meaning this one the London opens up until under London opens up at 3 p.m. and it goes to um, London opens up 3 p.m. and it goes to, uh, uh, I mean, I have it set from 3 p.m. until until 4 o'clock at night. But it's all about the reward to risk, right? All about the reward to risk. So in February, it's, you know, and like I said, this is historical. So, you know, we have to show you historical data. And past performance not indicative of future results. So make sure you're aware of that. But it's batting over 90% in February so far, the outer edge trade. So it's doing well. This is four contracts. Obviously, the micro would be one-tenth of this. One-tenth would be the micro. So if you do a micro, you just go into micro. It's the same thing, only it's one-tenth. One-tenth of the loss and one-tenth of the profit. Uh, where are you at? So if I go into the micro, it'll be the same setups down here, which I want to show you. Um, like, for instance, a NASDAQ has an outer edge trade now running live right here. It caught the outer trades at 17,926. It got below and it has an auto trail. We'll keep that up there so you can, guys can watch it and watch how the auto trail gets you out. So you can see the micros down here. So the micro is one tenth of the big contract. But you can see how the auto trail works well on the outer edge trade. It's trailing this NASDAQ one really well. Uh, 926, we're all the way up to 940. So it's going to fire out this trade when the auto trail pops us out at 39, 34 and 3 quarters for the auto trail on this, on this outer edge trade. This just happened on the NASDAQ futures. Now, NASDAQ futures, this is a 112.12 on the NASDAQ futures. See, it just fired on the, on the trade. So that was a 26 to 35 trade. So on this outer edge setup, it's going to wait again until we get back outside of this level. So that was from 26 to 35. That's 11 point trade on the outer edge on the NASDAQ. It's going to wait till we get outside this outer level and it's going to look for another setup. Let's go back to the S&P. I want to go back to the micro. I just want to show you this works in other markets. So the micros, it's the same thing, only one tenth. And what I mean by that is micros are one, typically one tenth. Now it's going to be off here, you know, um, it's not going to be exactly, but to the exact dollar amount, 
but it's going to be pretty close. So you can see that the micros is one-tenth of the loss and then one-tenth of the gain also. So that can be used also as far as that works, okay? Let's go back to the regular S&P. Now let's look at 90-day results to show the consistency, and I want to show you what you can do. So we know that trading during certain times during the day is very important. We know that power hour is in the morning from that 9 to 11 area, more importantly, 9 to 10, and power hour is in the afternoon, right? More importantly, you'll see a lot of volume pickup around 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock too, and then you got some window dressing into 3 o'clock. So you can dictate when you want to see these outer edge trades come up. What does that mean? If I go into this, If I go this, I got my zone up there right now, right? And I got slingshot selected. I have a 20 ATR trail. So I have a 20 ATR trail on a 13 Renko. I got my first two targets at 15 with a break even. So those results I just showed you were 215 tick targets and 2,000 tick runners with the 20 trail. I got my stop out to 1,000 ticks because my trail is going to get me out. My trail of 20 is going to get me out of all contracts if it's violated. My point is, is what you can do is, I got this thing running from the London Open from 3 a.m. to 4 p.m. right now. But let's say you just wanted to trade between the highest volume hours, which on the S&P, 9 to 10 typically is the first strongest hour of trading in the morning. In the afternoon, 2 to 5 or 3 is the strongest hour. So let's say if we just wanted to trade that, and let's look at the results on just trading specific times during that period. So if I do that, I can literally put, let's put this to the same as 5. Let's go back 90 days now on the strat to show the consistency of it using the same settings that we just had in February. I just want to show you that you can see how you can dictate what times you can put in to trade to trade uh, the, the highest volume levels, meaning you don't want to be trading the strats at noon on a, on a breakout trade or a retracement trade, so you can just avoid those completely. So if I look at the two strats running here right now, let me get 90 days back. I'm going to go 90 days back, not just February. Let's go 90 on the 113.13. So that will calculate. Let's roll over to here. So let's look for our next trade setup. So these are the trade setups this morning so far that's happened. We had a breakout at 3 o'clock. We had a breakout at 636. We had a breakout at 831 this morning. Our last breakout on the S&P was at 832 at 50.35 and three quarters, and it got as high as 50.43. So that last runner was almost eight S&P points, just under eight S&P points. At 8.30 this morning, you got an audible alert as an indicator or strategy to fire in that setup right there. So you had both either indicator in or strategy in. Totally up to how you want to do it. Now, we know that we only have two setups we're stalking right now. We're stalking this breakout trade here. So if it gets above this breakout trade, this will turn yellow. If you're strategy trading, it will fire in that fire in that strat. If you are indicator, I mean if you're indicator trading, you can chart trader in with an auto trail. Chart trader in with an auto trail. Chart trader in auto trail. Chart trader in. If you're strategy trading, it's going to fire in right after this yellow candle appears. Okay. In the room that we've been showing. It looks just like this. You know, the yellow candle fired this morning right there. Okay, on the 12020. The 11313, you get more setups. All right. And then the next trade that we're looking for, it's calculating 90 days back now, is we're gonna look for this outer edge trade, which is gonna fire in a second. All right, so we're trying to look for these outer edge trades 
to fire in these at the right time. Now let me go back to this. The, the, let me go back 90 days on this. Why this other's calculating too? Let me put this back to a thousand ticks. Now this does have an auto trail into it. You can use. So as that calculates, we'll look. We'll look at that. We'll look at that uh, 90 results in a second on the outer zone. Let's go back to the outer trade now. You notice I put trades in at the highest volume times. I put them from 9 to 10. And I want to show you this how this works. 9 to 10 and 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock. I just showed you that a second ago. So in other words, it's going to look for setups that are trading in that window. This is in the window. This is 2 o'clock window, right? So if you put specific t uh, volume windows in, it will still it will still show the arrow with an audible alert on the strategy but it will not go long or short it will only go long or short the times that you specifically put in why is that important because consistency over a longer period is when you trade during volume times on any market so if you noticed that yesterday these trades we're not in between, and here's what I want to show you, we're not in between 9 to 10 and 2 to 3. But it'll still fire with an audible alert, the arrow indicating of a possible reversal. That's very important for you to narrow down your time zones if you want to specifically trade a certain time zone. If you just want to specifically trade a certain time zone like this, then you're good to go. You know, between 2, I have it in 2 and 3 just to show you but it will still fire the arrow with an audible alert. So you can take all these setups with an audible alert if you want, or you can specifically have the strat take specific times that you want to have, which is, like I said, this is two to three and nine to 10 because the volume is so heavy. So if I go back 90 days in on this strat and I look at the consistency of the strat on just taking specific windows, now this is specific windows and that's it. We're looking for specific windows of opportunity. And this is windows of opportunity of just on the night over a 90 day period. So you can see the consistency of the setups. The one thing I want to show you is, let's go to summary. Now this is four contracts. I want to show you the reward to risk. The reward to risk, you want to be on a positive reward to risk. Largest winning trade versus largest losing trade. You want to have a good profit factor. I don't care about the percentage. So here it says percentage profitable between 9 to 10 with my parameters and 10 and 2 to 11 were 76%. But I don't care about that. What I care about is this. I care about the profit factor. I want a, I want a higher profit factor. If you have a one-to-one -one profit factor, you're not doing yourself any good. It's nice to have two, three, four profit factor. But I like the largest winning trade over the largest losing trade. I like to have a high reward to risk. That is a key. That is a key. You want to have a high reward to risk because what it does, if you come into some losing trades, the runner will take care of your, your, your losing trades as far as that goes will help out on not just getting your upside down. In other words, you don't want to try to make 100 and risk 300. You want to try to make 300 and risk 100. So that's one thing that you want to do on these strats. All right, so that's the strategy you guys are getting right here. Okay, you're getting this outer edge trade. So this morning, it's going to get long. If it closes on this Renko chart, if it closes by one candle below here and closes back inside like this, it's going to get us long. If it closes outside of it like yesterday and we were watching this live, you traders are in the room, it got long there, long there, and long there. So, you know, it just, it lets you know when the outer edge exists on the market. Now, momentum-wise, let's go back to here. This is a 112.12 momentum trader. Momentum 
you see I took it out from 12 tick to small targets to longer targets. So as far as momentum goes, you can have a trail that goes into the momentum. Let's, let's look at the consistency of the reward to risk. Once again, you want to have a, remember, past performance is not indicative of future results. It's just historical results over the past 90 days. So don't get caught up in that, right? I want you to look at the most important thing, largest winner versus largest loser. It's very important you understand that. That's what we want on these strats. And this is a 90-day results. We want to see consistency in the setup. We want to see consistency in the setup on the drawdowns also. So you want to see, now this is like I said with the, uh, the large contract, the micro's one-tenth of this would be one-tenth. So a micro would be one-tenth. Oops. But using these parameters, you can put what trail you want. There, it's better show the daily daily. So today, uh, not today, it doesn't have um, hasn't registered today yet. But uh, if you'll see that the consistency lies in the drawdown. That's key. Okay. So we're going to go over these in future conference calls. I just want to show you the difference in the strats. The difference in the strats is you can have a runner that continues to run, which that's what we'll have on this. But you can also see, put this back because I want to show you these yellow lines. You can also see when the future breakouts are if you're trading an indicator-based system whether it be strategy or indicator based, you can see the consistency based upon that. So let me go back here. You have an option and the, what, the version you're, you're going to get, you'll have a number of closes here and you have a trail. I'll show you in a second. But like I said, you will have an option of putting in what trails you want, what targets you want. So they will turn yellow bars when they break out. So the next breakout, like I said on the S&P day, which we're going to stalk in the room, is 40, 40, two and a half. We're either going to get two setups coming. Right here it is. So watch this as we develop the trade setup. It's going to fire in long. Let me show the strats on. Hold on. i got to turn the strat on during this time period. It's actually between 9 and 10, so it will fire the trade. It's in a volume level. See, so i got I got 9 to 10, so we're good. So it's going to fire in a, a trade on the outer edge right now if we close back inside. So this is, if you have it, this is, this is kind of neat how and this works on all markets. Remember, the market, markets can only do two things. They can, either, they can either break out, right? They can break out and run, go vertical, or they can go chop sideways. This strat's really good on picking chop markets. Like yesterday, it was a chop market. It called three trades in a row. It's a good trading day. Where this one this morning has been catching what? Momentum. Look at those momentum trades. Because they're break they're they're eight they're zone breakout trades. One, two, three, four in a row. One, two, three, four. And they'll turn yellow for you. Alright, so I know I have two different types of setups. As we watch this, we want to look for a breakout buy here or a retracement by here. Now these are both small Renko sizes. This is a 112.12. And I'll compare apples to apples. I'll put this to a 112.12. 12. 
We'll watch this thing pull in. So it's going to pull in if we get into a reversal. Now there's one other type of setup that we have in the room. I'm going to go while we're waiting for this to pull in. It's called the counter setup. What the counter setup does is this. We have one on the NASDAQ futures running now. We just got out of one actually here. What a counter setup does is we have zone breakouts, right? That break out. But when what, what I notice is this. When these zone breakouts are formed, this is a corrective wave or a counter trade on the NASDAQ. Hold on, hold on, on the S&P right now, watch. So these were breakout trades. These are zone breakout trades. This one, this one, this one, this one, right? Zone breakouts. These are all zone breakout trades. What I noticed is, is that on certain, if you're in a range market, if you're in between HB and LVA, the market likes to form these tops, and we like to go back to the other side, right? We do have an option to do this. I'll get more into this down the road. Um, this is something that's a little bit more advanced. I do have a toggle switch for this. But this is a counter wave. It works well on the NASDAQ futures and some S&P and so on, so on. I'll show you how to do that on the next call. But that is available for you guys also for a corrective wave move. But I want to show you the most two important ones right now. I want to show you how we're looking to pull in right here on an outer edge trade and how we're looking to pull in either that on a breakout. All right. So, Gerald, how long are we in? We in 40 minutes? All right. I'll just have to send these charts out if we pull back in. But what it would have to do, guys, is this. You want to pull back in and see an arrow that fires. I'll send these charts out. We can't let this run until this thing pulls in. We're still waiting for it to pull in. But that's the idea behind the whole thing.